Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Good. God is good. Amen. Die. Now we're going to sign the word. I'm going to call my wife here in a few minutes for an example about a conversation that happened in the Bible. Today's blog title is I and my father are one. Okay. This is a picture, you know, kind of to help us imagine when and when Jesus was on earth and he would have conversations. So in John 14 and 6, very famous verse. But most of you probably know or have read this before. So we're going to follow it word for word. We're going to sign it word for word, okay? And it says, Jesus saith unto him. So who is him here? If we go back up, we'll see he's talking to Thomas. He says, I... I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the only way. I am the truth, the only truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And verse 7 says, If, so that's depending on you, it says, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. From henceforth, meaning now on, ye know him and have seen him. Now, John wrote this, and Jesus loved John. So let's skip over to John. 1 and 18. Here we see no, none, not a, meaning no one, no man has seen God at any time. There's no possibility about it. It says no man has seen God at any time. The only the only begotten son That's why a lot of people get confused because they have the son and then they have the Father, and they're thinking that they're separate. But let's go ahead and explain some more and sign the word. We're going to follow it, okay? Which is in the bosom of the Father. And we know that God is a spirit that we can't see. Again, it says the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Okay, let's go back to our other verses here. John 14, verse 7. I'm going to call my, my wife soon. And she's over there trying to get herself ready. 
She's a beautiful woman. She's mine, not yours. You know him and have seen him. Now Philip saith unto him, saith unto Jesus, Lord, just imagine, you know, Jesus just talking with his disciples. They could be sitting or standing, we don't know. And he's saying, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Okay? So he's just got done speaking these things that we've read. And now Philip. Philip knows that we can't see God at any time. So he's a little bit confused. You know, we're pretending that this one here is Philip. And he maybe is like, hey, Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Well, go ahead, I want to see you, the Father. So imagine that we are having a conversation that would be appropriate for, for today's time. Okay, we have Jeff and Lisa. We're gonna be friends this time. So we're gonna change Lord to Jeff. That's how our conversation would be at this time, and it makes sense. But back with Jesus, it was different. And Philip says, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. And Jesus said unto him, Jesus didn't, you know, turn around and start speaking to the spirit in heaven. Jesus was, his answer was, have I been so long time with you? And yet, hast thou not known me? So he just finished telling them, you know him and have seen him. The son of God, the son of man, is talking about himself here as the father. Okay, we learned that only the begotten son has seen him. 
We continue on in verse 9. It says, He that, he's talking to the disciples, or anyone else, says, He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou? Then, show us the Father. And Jesus continues to say, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. And that word dwelleth means to live. God is everywhere. And yesterday we talked about God being manifested in the flesh. Because in here he's saying, The Father that dwelleth in me, he doth the works. Believe me that I am the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now we say that God is everywhere. And Jesus, again, manifested into flesh, so we would have a leader to follow and learn from. And that fleshly body was crucified and then risen and glorified. And he continues saying, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And again, it's all speaking of himself here. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Again, God came down, manifested his flesh, was risen so to be glorified, and then came down. And now we can call his name Jesus. And we are done for today. We'll see you tomorrow. And make sure to follow Acts 2 and 38 to be saved. It says, repent, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I forgot to add uh, the verse that actually is our title, which would be John 10 and 30. It says, I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. So again, remember the father is a spirit that lives within Jesus. It says, for which of those works do ye stone me? He's asking, are you stoning me for the good works I've done, the miracles and the healings? And the Jews answered him, saying, for a good work we stone thee not. But for blasphemy, blasphemy, 
And because that thou being a man, meaning human, makest thyself God. <laughs>